Now, the corporate elite, you know, all you got to do is turn on the TV. Corporate elite, Wall Street and the drug companies getting very nervous. And they should get nervous. <clears throat> Trump and the Republican Party are getting nervous. And they should get nervous. And the Democratic establishment is getting nervous, and they should get nervous. And I hear the establishment saying, oh, Bernie can't win the election. Take a look at this crowd today and tell me we can't win the election. Wow, Bernie Sanders with that message to a fired up crowd in California last night. Joining us now, Washington Post columnist E.J. Dion. He's the author of the new book entitled Code Red, How Progressives and Moderates Can Unite to Save Our Country. Seem pretty divided right now, E.J. Yeah, you know, what's interesting, E.J., is of all the applause lines, the loudest applause line from Bernie Sanders was when he was attacking the Democratic establishment. Mm -hmm. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, it sure does. And I, I like the point you made earlier, Joe, that this is a very winnable election. Trump is, in fact, uh, a weak incumbent facing the voters. And what can blow the election is if progressives and moderates are at each other's throats. The reason I wrote this book is because I think that progressives and moderates have a lot more in common uh, than they want to realize. If you take the core uh, issues, whether it's health care, or climate change, or access to training or higher ed after high school, um, they all want to move in a progressive direction. The differences are a matter of degree. Um, and I think the country is crying out for a message that at times Bernie does extremely well, uh, but so do some of the other candidates. You know, people want to hear about remedy, solving problems, dignity, the idea of equal dignity, and I think dignity should be a central theme of this election. It's uh, a lack of dignity is what people in inner city Baltimore feel. It's what people feel in mill towns like Reading or Erie in Pennsylvania. Remedy, dignity, and empathy. I put a lot of stress in the book on that beautiful first word of the American Constitution, the word we. We don't have a sense of we in the country uh, right now because Donald Trump's whole strategy uh, is to divide us as a country. And so I think there is a potential for unity here uh, among all of the forces against Trump. And I am trying uh, to make a case that they need to come together at the end of this thing and not leave themselves so <clears throat> tattered that a weak president manages to limp to reelection. So, EJ, you talk about a national emergency. The national emergency is such that these two wings of the Democratic Party should be able to come together, and they certainly have in the past, usually. I'm wondering, though, how much more difficult does that become if you have Bernie Sanders running against a guy worth $55, $56 billion, who is a former Republican, who supported stop and frisk, who, supported, who opposed the minimum wage, who's against a lot of things that the rank-and-file Democratic Party are for, even if he's become a champion of progressive causes over the past four or five years. You know, I was thinking about that uh, very thing watching the show earlier this morning. Um, and you could imagine a nightmarish situation at the end, a democratic socialist versus a capitalist billionaire. You know, the international, the old communist song, there's a line, tis the final conflict. And you really don't want the final conflict of the Democratic Party. <laughs> no, I mean, no, the, you <laughs> you've got, I mean, on the one hand, Bloomberg has been very progressive on issues where the country is moving in a progressive direction, notably guns, uh, and climate change. Um, but I think that if the, or if the party uh, is torn between somebody who is spending enormous sums of money on very effective ads, that tagline, Mike will get it done, is really, I'll beat Trump. Um, and on the yep. other hand, Bernie Sanders, who could really rally uh, people, as you saw uh, in that clip, um, it, could, it could work the party into the very division that I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, let's go to Casey Hunt. She has a question. Casey. Yeah, EJ, I, so 
I guess my question for you, um, the premise of the book is fascinating, right? You, in theory, can put moderates and progressive together, create some sort of supermajority. I'm just not convinced that there is such a thing as a moderate voter in America anymore. It seems like the middle of the country has been so turned off uh, by our politics. A lot of people are just shutting it off and deciding not to go to the ballot box. I mean, do you think that there is such a thing as a swing voter anymore? Or have we moved into a model where it's all about just getting out as many of your people as possible? You know, that's a good question. And, and by the way, the word moderate is a complicated word. I agree with you. It can refer to all kinds of things. Uh, but I think that you saw a yearning for uh, someone to lead a center and a left united in the swings back and forth between candidates like Pete Buttigieg uh, and Amy Klobuchar. What the book argues is that it's a mistake, a kind of false choice, to see uh, campaigns either about mobilization or about persuasion. You've got to find ways to bring them both together. And I use the 2018 midterms where Democrats got 25 million more votes in 2018 than they did in 2014 um, by doing both, by mobilizing a strong anti-Trump constituency, but by persuading what looked like 10 or 15 percent of Trump voters from 2016 to switch sides and join the Democrats. In the book, I tell the stories of Abigail Spanberger, uh, a more moderate member who took a Tea Party district outside of Richmond, and Ayanna Presley, a very progressive Democrat, uh, who took uh, the seat in Boston from Mike Capuano. Each of them needs the other. There is no Democratic majority in the House without Spanberger, but Spanberger herself profited from the energy on the progressive side uh, from all the people who volunteered for her. I, I did a book event about a week and a half ago where somebody said, I am more progressive than Spanberger, but I work my heart out for her. When these two sides come together, as Nancy Pelosi put it at the time, they win, baby. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.